I started the Stitching Book Club newsletter one year ago in May of 2023 and it has now been 12 months, 12 editions, 12 freebies and I thought that it would be a great time to just go back through and do a little bit of a freebie parade of all of the, the freebies that we've had over the past year. Um, I just want to take a quick minute um, and give myself kind of a pat on the back because honestly when I started the newsletter I really honestly didn't think that I would make it through a full year. Um, the newsletter is it, I love doing. I absolutely love making the newsletter but it is a lot of work um, and so I just wasn't sure if I'd be able to keep up with it um, especially creating a freebie every single month. Um, I, I'm just, I'm so proud of myself for making it through a full year um, because honestly when I started it I really, I wasn't sure how many months I would get through before. I just couldn't do it anymore but I, I do love do it. I, I absolutely love doing it and uh, I look forward to continuing the newsletter. Um, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to take a moment and appreciate myself. I know that, you know, we're so not used to giving ourselves praise because um, often it's thought of as you know being selfish or something um but I think you know when you deserve it you deserve it and I'm very very proud of myself for this so um I just want to thank you all for supporting me over the past year and for everybody that signed up for the newsletter um I just I, I, I love how much you guys are loving it so <laughs> you're definitely what has kept me going through the past 12 months so with that, let's go ahead and take a look at all of our past freebies. So the newsletter started, like I said, in May of 2023, and this was the very first freebie. And this it was called Spring Has Sprung. I don't know if you can hear some rumbling in the background. My cat is currently zooming around the house. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, but yes, this was spring has sprung and this was the first freebie and I still this is one of my absolute favorites I just love the colors of this it's so bright and vibrant um and I just love all the different purples in it and those little birds I love those little birds so much so that's May May 2023 spring has sprung next would be June 2023 and this is entitled Blue Quilts. And when I started working on this one, I, um, cause I had spent last summer in West Yellowstone and June was just gorgeous. <laughs> and even the end, the end of May was just gorgeous weather when we got to West Yellowstone. And it just had me in this mood of wanting to go on a picnic, <laughs> go on a picnic in the woods. And that got me thinking about like old fashioned quilts and um, you know, picnic quilts. And I just love the combination of white with, you know, like bright blues. Um, it's showing up kind of dark on camera. It's actually the blues are a bit brighter. They're more of a royal blue than what I'm seeing on camera. But I just wanted to create like a little miniature quilt. <laughs> My cat's really zooming at the moment. I don't know if you can hear that, but she's enjoying herself for sure. <laughs> um, next is July 2023, and this is entitled Stars and Stripes. And because um, I have I have so many stitchers from outside the U.S., just internationally, you guys are all over the place, which I love so much. Um, so, you know, if you're not from the States, <laughs> July is pretty much dominated here in the States by the 4th of July, by Independence Day. We take that holiday pretty seriously here. <laughs> so uh, pretty much everything for the month of July is, you know, red, white, and blue. So I definitely wanted to go with that theme. I'm gonna, I wanted to go with something a little bit more elegant. So I um, added this section down here with the stars and these kind of floral patterns. I think it turned out really nice and the, the gradient uh, coloring on the stripes. I really like this one. I love this one. And I think even if you're not from the States, um, 
You could certainly change the colors of this one if you didn't want to do red, white, and blue, or even, you know, you don't you don't have to think of this as, you know, Americana red, white, and blue flag. Um, I think it's just a nice piece. Um, but again, you could always change the colors if you wanted to. So next is August, um, entitled Hello Sunshine. Obviously, that's what it says, Hello Sunshine. And, you know, I just wanted August to be very summery, very bright. Um, so I went with the sunflowers. And I absolutely love stitching little bees. I don't know what it is, you know. It's so funny. I think most of us hate bees in real life, right? Nobody enjoys being stung by a bee. But they are a lot of fun to stitch. They look really nice in, in needlework. I think bees look very regal. Um, so I just, I, I loved adding the, the little bees in there. Next is September 2023, and this was entitled Pumpkin Delight. And, you know, typically pumpkins are thought of more October for Halloween or November for Thanksgiving. But, um, again, I was, I was in West Yellowstone at this time, and fall had very much set in by September this past year. It was very cold, even in August. And so by September, I was just very much in, like, this pumpkin spice autumn fall mode so that's why I went with the pumpkins in September instead of a little bit later um, but this was just a very very easy design to stitch you know all these concentric circles of, of pattern it's just a nice easy one to do next is trick or treat I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Halloween, you know, I, I hated Halloween growing up as a kid. I hated it. Um, because for one, I hate scary things. I'm not into the scary aspect of Halloween at all. Till, to this day, I still am not into scary things. Um, and as a kid, you know, growing up, I grew up in Montana. And for Halloween, it was always so cold that... Um, you had to wear winter coats over your costumes so you know that took a lot of the fun out of it right there and i grew up in a very rural area so we used to have to drive into neighborhoods that we weren't even familiar with and you know so we wouldn't know any of the houses we were trick-or-treating at it just it wasn't fun but as an adult i have fallen in love with halloween um particularly the ability to decorate <laughs> i think i just i think i just love decor. I think I just love holiday themed things and Halloween is just so much fun to decorate for and you get to use all these bright colors and and now you know I have gotten the chance as an adult myself to live in a neighborhood and so handing out candy on Halloween has been such a joy. I love doing it. Um, so trick or treat. I, I just wanted to do something really bright and colorful. Very just kind of classic Halloween. And even though I also absolutely hate candy corn, I'm sorry, I really don't like it, but it, it's like, you know, the perfect candy to include on any sort of Halloween themed pattern. So I've got to add the little candy corns in there no matter what. <laughs> and this up here, this band, I thought this looked kind of like a Frankenstein, you know, like a cartoon Frankenstein with the green skin and the purple hair. I thought that kind of looked like his hairline. And then we've got the bats, of course. So yeah, that one, this one was so much fun. I love this. And I can't, now I can't remember which one it is, but there's a flaw in my stitching. And I mentioned it in this newsletter. If I remember right, it had something to do with the lettering. I think this lettering up here, I think in the chart, this lettering. I think I'm off one stitch somewhere in the lettering. And I mentioned this in the chart because you guys are always so unbelievably good <laughs> at noticing differences between my stitching and charts, which doesn't happen very often. I'm proud to say it doesn't happen very often. But anytime it has happened, you guys have like so quickly sent me messages like, hey, um, so I noticed that this is different and just wondering, you know, is the chart right or your stitching right? So I made a point of putting 
in this newsletter that the picture of this that something is off and I'm, I'm, I'm not remembering what it is right now I think it is something to do with the lettering and trick um, but it is in that newsletter so in case you're stitching this and you notice a difference um, it is noted in that so moving on it is November the time to give thanks which is what it says time to give thanks and again this is kind of you know I'm an American, I'm in the U.S., so I'm celebrating U.S. holidays, um, and so this is in regards to Thanksgiving, um, which we celebrate in November, and um, I didn't make it overtly Thanksgiving-themed, because I think a lot of cultures, you know, outside the U.S., around the world, celebrate, you know, harvest season as a time to give thanks. They don't necessarily have Thanksgiving, but it's like, let's celebrate our harvest for the year. And so I did kind of try to keep the pattern a little bit neutral and far as far as like the holiday goes, you know, we just have some autumn leaves and just some fun banding up here. And this one was just, an, again, just another nice, nice easy stitch to work on. And I just love autumn colors. I love autumn colors so much the or bright oranges and golds into the, the red tones. I just, oh, those might be my favorite color combinations. I just love autumn stitching. So next is December. And this was entitled Peace and Comfort. And I completely forgot to go over all the fabrics that these are stitched on. I was going to do that. Most of them are pretty, pretty basic. Um, so this is like a 14 count oatmeal Ada, white 14 count Ada. This is the same as the December stitch. So this is 28 count um, ivory even wave by Zweigart, white Ada, oatmeal 14 count white 14 count and oatmeal as you can see I kind of kind of stuck to all the same fabrics for these they're all my favorites so yes this is on 28 count um 28 count even weave by Zweigart this is ivory ivory color by Zweigart and I always stitch two over two I have not mastered the skill of one over one stitching yet um but yes this is entitled uh peace and comfort and so I wanted to use green and red, you know, for the Christmas holiday. Um, but again, I know, you know, again, stitchers from all around the world. Um, and not everybody celebrates Christmas. So I wanted to do something that I thought, I hoped everybody could enjoy stitching. But I did use, you know, the classic red and green Christmas colors because that's what I celebrate. And... Yeah, this one, this one was, you know, I've said this about a lot of them, but this, this one was very peaceful to stitch. And that's why I entitled it Peace and Comfort. I was, um, as you know, you know I, I hate having to mention it so much, but as you know, I, I have a lot of health issues and I was just very, very poor during the holiday season this past year. And so while I was working on this model, um, I was I was very ill and and I just found it it was just for some reason I don't know what it was it was just very very peaceful to work on and uh, and that's how I came up with the name for the for the design and so I hope you know if anybody out there is working on this one or gonna work on this one I hope you guys find it as peaceful as I did but yeah there's there's just something about it I think it's I think it's really pretty So 2024, January, um, this one was entitled Snowflake Blossom, and as you can see, hopefully you can see it's on opalescent fabric, and I am just obsessed with opalescent fabric. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. There's just something about that sparkle. I don't think I will, you know, I don't think I'll ever grow out of that being a little girl that just like loves sparkly, shiny things. Like, I don't think I will ever grow out of that no matter how old I get. So yeah, opalescent fabric is mm, still one of my favorites. And um, yeah, so this is called Snowflake Blossom. And the middle of it, 
is actually the exact same design as January, the January block of the Little Moments monthly sale. So if you have not been keeping up with the newsletter, in January not only did I provide this freebie, but I also started a year-long freebie sale. And every month is just a little square. It's this size because this is exactly what January is. Um, I had actually designed this first. And then when I, it, the idea popped into my head, like, mm, maybe I should do a year-long sal, you know, to kind of, because I know a lot of people aren't really familiar with sals, and I thought a freebie sal might be a really good way to introduce a lot of people to the concept of, of doing a sal. And when the idea came to me, I was already so close to being ready to put out the January um, newsletter. And so I just kind of thought, oh, that's actually the perfect little block to put in, in the cell for the month of January. So I, I changed the colors, I added some gradients in the design. But yeah, the center of this is exactly the same as the Little Moments cell. And you can find um, that on the website. You can find the Little Moments monthly cell on the website, or it's in the newsletters starting in January. So next we have February and oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this one. <laughs> this might be my absolute favorite freebie that I designed. I love this one. It's for February and it's entitled Love Grows. And for February I obviously wanted to do something for Valentine's Day. And it took me a really long time to get the colors right on this. And again, on camera it's showing up a lot darker than it is in real life. In real life it's it's very vibrant, very pink. <laughs> and I don't know, I just, I don't know what it is about this one. This one's just my favorite. It's my favorite of all of them. I really enjoyed working on it. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I don't know. I really like this one. So I encourage you to stitch this one if you are going to stitch any other freebies. This one is my favorite. So this is February 2024. Next we have March 2024. And I'm also really proud of this one. This is Celtic Knot. And I think this, out of all the freebies, I feel like this is the one that's like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it's like the most professional I don't know it's not the right word um you know a lot of these are are pretty simplistic I mean they're they are but they aren't but a lot of these you know the freebies were meant to be just simple little designs and I feel like this one just really is something you know like I think the gradient really turned out really well and I don't know I just this one I just I'm really proud of this one and the colors are really nice too um I used Kelly Green as the lightest, the lightest green in there. And I don't normally use these, these shades of green. I usually go for um, something that's a little more yellowy in tone. Like you can see, you can see the difference. Like these are very different in tone to these very classic greens. Um, so I don't get to stitch with these greens very much. It's just not really what I do. And so this was a lot of fun using these colors. I enjoyed it a lot and I would actually really love to see this design be like the center of a bigger design. I don't know if I will ever do that but it's definitely something to think about. So yeah, Celtic Knot. And finally we are in April 2024 and we have Hopping Into Spring and I, I mentioned this in my newsletter, I mentioned this on Instagram and Facebook, I did not know <laughs> until it was basically here. I really did not realize that Easter was in March this year, so I had both this design and the little square for the um, Little Moments monthly sell as bunnies, you know, for Easter, Easter bunny, and um, I got very late into the month of March when I just looked at the calendar and went, wait, Easter's, Easter's in March? Wait, oh no. Um, but whatever, it doesn't matter that Easter was in March this year. You know, it's it's usually in April. 
and even without Easter bunnies are just a fun little spring companion and I enjoyed this one a lot too this one I, I thought this one was going to take a really long time to stitch up but it actually you know with all these little bits and bobs but it actually stitched up really really fast I was surprised how fast it worked up and it was it was just a lot of fun this one was a lot of fun to work on And that's the last one. That's that's one full year of stitching. I know that some of you, I know not very many of you, but I know that some of you have worked to stitch every one of these, which is just incredible to me. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to do my designs and to read the newsletters. And it really does just mean so much to me that you know, all the hard work I put into it is actually being appreciated. Um, yeah, it just, it, it means so much to me. So thank you. Thank you to all of you, every single one of you that has signed up for the newsletter. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I look forward to continuing the newsletter and seeing what other freebies come out in the future. <laughs> These are so much fun to stitch. You know, I I really enjoy doing the freebies because most of the stuff that I work on is quite large and I'm a very slow stitcher. So I don't get a lot of finishes typically. You know, I'll get, you know, four or five, maybe six finishes in a whole year. Um, and so adding these freebies into my life, which these typically, most of these take me, usually when I go to stitch the models for the freebies, it's like the deadline for the newsletter is coming up and I'm just like, I need to get it done. So I'll spend like maybe two, three days like heavily working on, you know, in the evenings doing nothing but stitching the mini. And it usually only takes me two to three days to finish these. Um, and so it's just been really nice to every month have a finish you know that's that's a very enjoyable thing to have um to have finished products that you can enjoy so yeah so these have been very good for me too i've really i've really just enjoyed doing this so there they are one year one year of stitching book club newsletter uh, i hope that you guys enjoyed looking through all of the past stitching and i hope that you have enjoyed stitching some of these designs and i will see you all soon because i am working on our next mystery literary salve and i'm going to be announcing that soon all right that's it i hope you guys all have a lovely day and thanks for joining me